All right, I'm glad week five is done. That was my worst week in a couple years as far as point spread picks go. NFL week six, moving on. Atlanta at Minnesota to kick things off. Minnesota at home, they're four point favorites. Atlanta, they're five and one against the spread on the road. They're 0 4 and one against spread versus Minnesota. They're allowing 32 and a half points per game. They are decimated with injuries, especially on the secondary. They have no secondary left at all. I expect Minnesota to correct themselves even further and take the points, Vikings. Take the fucking points. You had that game against Seattle, and you gave it away. You gave it away not only once, but twice in the fourth quarter. You could have buried them or made it a two-score game. Instead, you give Russell Wilson the field to march down, correct it this week, take care of business against Atlanta. I like Minnesota to win this and cover the spread. Baltimore, seven and a half point road favorites in Philadelphia to play the Eagles. Gary, the worst linebacker I've ever fucking seen. Roethlisberger can get all the credit in the world for doing whatever, but he saw what every single Eagles fan saw, and anybody who follows the linebackers or defensive side of the ball closely, Gary has been targeted 23 times this season. Quarterbacks have completed all 23 passes with a perfect QB rating against him. So as soon as Claypool lined up against him in the slot, on that fourth touchdown of the game by Claypool, why the fuck was Gary still on the fucking field for one, Schwartz? And two, Roethlisberger, you could almost see him laughing. He knew where he was going right away. He saw the matchup. He's not an idiot. He's smart. He's played in the NFL this long for a reason. Just a disgrace. Baltimore should this win this game going away. Some stats, Baltimore 6-1 and one against spread on the road, 21-26 against the spread as Road favorites of this margin or larger, seven and a half or larger. Uh, 12 and 19 against the spread. They are in that situation. Two, two and one straight up versus Philadelphia. That means nothing with the way these two teams have been playing. Uh, Philadelphia has been decimated by injuries, but will it really matter as long as Gary is your starting, one of your starting linebackers? I don't think it will. Uh, 16 and 2 straight up in their last 18 is the Ravens. 6 0 oh, 1 against spread on the road. Seven sacks, two fumbles, forced fumbles or fumble recoveries by the Ravens, and an interception last week. They are going to be all over Wentz as he's still down at least three O linemen, possibly four. Lane Johnson haven't heard for sure what's going to happen with him this week. I. Uh, just a mess in Philadelphia right now. Baltimore should have no problem covering this spread and winning this game. And I will be pissed off this Sunday again. Chicago at Carolina to take on the Panthers, who are hot right now. They're on a roll after dropping their first two. The Bears 1-6 against spread versus teams with winning records. 6-4 straight up versus Carolina, however. 3-6-1 against the spread versus Carolina. And they're 2-6 against the spread on the road. The underdog is 6-1-1 one one against the spread in this series head-to-head. -head. Carolina, they're 6-1 against the spread in October. 1-4 straight up for Chicago in their last five. Chicago is... Uh, sorry, Carolina's 1-5 straight up at home. Now, McCaffrey's eligible for this game. So my decision is I'm going to give you two options on this game. If McCaffrey's out, I am taking the Bears to win and cover the spread. If McCaffrey's eligible then I'll be switching that and I will be putting my money on Carolina to win and cover the spread. So that's my opinion on this game. I think it's pretty close. Neither team has really shown me a lot and neither team has really shown me that they're bad either. Cincinnati on the road to play the Colts. Colts are seven and a half point home favorites. Colts are 4-0 against spread as home favorites. 6-4 straight up and against spread versus Cincinnati. They're 4-1 against spread at home. 8-1 straight up at home versus Cincinnati. 4-2 against the spread at home versus Cincinnati. The favorite is 5-1 against spread head-to-head. -head. The Bengals are 4-1-1 against spread in their last six games. And yes, they've given up the most sacks of anyone in the NFL. And the Colts have one of the better defensive fronts in the league. Not a good matchup for rookie Joe Burrow in this one. I will take the Colts and I will lay the points. I will take them to cover the spread. Moving on, Cleveland at Pittsburgh. This one should be a good game. The Browns, 1-3-1 and one against spread in Pittsburgh. 1-8-1 and one straight up versus Pittsburgh. And Cleveland has not won at Heinz Field since 2003. The Steelers get another 
bad set of linebackers to face this week, which means Claypool, if you're a fantasy player, you might want to roll him out there as a slot receiver, and he could collect big points for you once again this week. Pittsburgh should take advantage of that. They're 34-4-1 straight up versus Cleveland. Uh, the Browns are just up and down. The offense finally seems like it's rolling. Dallas has a potent offense. The momentum maybe from Prescott with that nasty injury he suffered, that was just gross. Absolutely gross. I, I kind of chuckled to myself watching the Cowboys and Eagles last Sunday. Like, just the luck of these two fucking teams the last two years. Like, they're already two of the most injured teams in the NFL. And then you see Prescott go down for the Cowboys. As much as I hate them, that is just ridiculous what these two teams have gone through. Anyways, Pittsburgh and Cleveland. I like Pittsburgh to win this game. I like Cleveland to cover the spread. I think this is a field goal game. I don't see Pittsburgh really blowing anybody out unless they can take full advantage of Claypool against the Browns linebackers. Denver at New England. Denver is 9.5 point road underdogs. The Broncos are 5-0 against spread on turf. The, uh, the Broncos are 7-1 against the spread in October. 3-7 against spread versus New England, though. 9-4 uh, against spread in their last 13 overall is Denver. And they are 0-5 straight up and against the spread in New England. The home team is 7-2 against spread. Favorite is 7-3 against spread. A lot of this dates back to when Brady was with the Patriots. Cam Newton, he's healthy. How much of it is the layoff from uh, being affected with COVID going to hurt him? Uh, New England 7-3 straight up and against spread versus Denver. Locke and Lindsey will be back for Denver on the other side, so they get their starting running back and starting quarterback back. So both teams will have their starting QBs in the lineup after layoffs. I think that New England wins this game, but way too many points. I think Denver will keep it close, or at least within 9.5. Detroit on the road at Jacksonville. How is Detroit favored over anyone in the NFL that isn't the New York J-E-T-S right now? I do not understand the spread one bit. Detroit's 0-4 against spread as a favorite. 1-6 against spread their last seven road games. 3-12 against the spread their last 15 overall. 1-12 straight up in their last 13 games. 1-8 straight up on the road in their last nine. The favorite is 4-0 against spread versus in this series, but I, I think this number is just wrong unless the public's really hammering Detroit earlier or something. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, teams are 3-3 three and three straight up and against spread in the head-to-head -head in the last six in this series. Uh, Jacksonville should get Miles Jack and... Uh, I can't remember whether it's C.J. Henderson or D.J. Henderson. One of the Hendersons could is probably going to return to the lineup for the Jags this week. The other one I'm not sure about as they are both injured and out. Uh, Shark should be playing the rookie wide out and that should make the difference in this game. I think Jacksonville wins this game by more than what Detroit is favored by. So I like Jacksonville all around in this one. Houston on the road in Tennessee. Tennessee with that big blowout on Tuesday night over Buffalo. They did not look like, it did not look like the layoff affected them. It looked like a bye week for them where they had extra prep time for some reason. Houston, they got off the schneid. New coach. Was that the adrenaline? Can they keep it going moving forward? I'm not sure how much support I have for Houston right now. They are 12-5-1 against spread versus Tennessee, however. 11-5 straight up versus Tennessee, 1-5 against spread in their last six games. The favorite is 9-3 in the head-to-head -head series. Home team is 6-2 against the spread in the head-to-head. -head. Tennessee 6-2 straight up at homes, 7-1 straight up their last eight, 3-6 against spread at home versus Houston. I don't care. I like Tennessee to win this game, but Houston to cover. I see this as a field goal game. The ground game of Tennessee will just chew up time on the clock and keep the game a lot closer, no matter how good the offenses play or defenses play for either team. I think this is more like a field goal game. Tennessee pulls out the victory. Washington on the road to face the Giants. Wow, what a battle here. I bet everybody's running their TV and their betting sites to place money on this one or place their eyeballs on this game. Uh, Washington is two and a half point road underdogs are one and four against the spread versus the Giants two and five against spread in New York one six and one against spread their last eight games the favorite is four and oh against spread in the head-to-head -head. 
20 and 8 straight up versus Washington are the Giants 6 and 3 against spread in their last nine games. I will take the Giants in this one and I will take them to cover the small spread as well. I see this as a field goal game. I won't be wasting my time with this game with money, with my eyes, with in any shape, form, or fashion. I'll check out highlights and look at stats and stuff like that, but really this game means nothing to, the, uh, to me. I'd stay away from it at all costs but i'll take the giants on both for the sake of my video the new york jets on the road in miami another game i am not going to touch and not going to watch at all new york jets 10 point underdogs they're 0 and 5 against the spread 0 3 and 1 against spread in miami 0 4 and 1 against spread versus miami uh 4 and 19 straight up on the road 15 6 and 1 against spread in miami if you want to go a little further back the underdog is 4 and 1 and 1 against spread head to head Miami 5-2 against spread both at home and overall in their last seven. They're 4-1 straight up versus the New York J-E-T-S. Miami, man, I don't know how they're favored by double digits though. Like, if, put it to like six or something. Like, how is this number 10? I know the Jets are bad. I know they've been blown out. But what is Miami showing to deserve anywhere close to a double digit favorite? I don't care who they're playing. Miami, I think, should win this game. Touchdown max for me. Jets hang around. Keep it within the 10. Green Bay, one point favorites now on the road at Tampa. Rodgers versus Brady. Here's a couple stats for the two QBs. Rodgers is 24-18 and 18 against spread as an underdog. When I originally wrote this, they were the one point underdog. Now it's flipped to Green Bay, a one point favorite. A lot of the public money has been hammering the Packers, as I might as well. Tampa Bay Brady is... 43-21 and 21 against spread following a loss. They lost to the Bears last week. That tells you Brady's going to bounce back. Now, Tampa Bay, 2-4-1 against spread their last seven games. 1-7-2 against spread at home. 7-2 straight up at home versus Green Bay is Tampa Bay. They seem to be able to get it done against the Packers. Uh, the road team is 162 against the spread in Tampa Bay games since 2009 so that tells me to take the road team both these all these stats you can lead them anyway you can look up so many different stats to really sway your decision in any form i'm pointing out the ones that stick out to me you guys make your own decisions i'm just giving you my opinions green bay i like rogers i think green bay has shown me more this year and with a one point spread I'm not afraid to take the Packers on the road to win by a point. I think this game is a field goal game. You can flip a coin, but I'll roll with Rodgers and the team that's showing me they are unbeaten so far this year, as opposed to the quarterback who couldn't remember it was fourth down. LA Rams, three and a half point road favorites in South San Fran, and other team decimated by injury, the 49ers. They're down, what is it, four cornerbacks. Um... Who else I got it written down here? No pass protection versus Aaron Donald this week. Yeah, four cornerbacks, two edge rushers. Oh my goodness, that, that just spells a nightmare if you're Jimmy G coming back. Could he see be pulled early two games in a row since his return? Oh no, I think it might happen. The Rams, they're 5-0-1 against spread on grass. 3-0-1 against spread versus the division. 10-3 against spread on the road. 16-7 straight up on the road are the Rams. The road team is 4-1 against spread in the head-to-head -head series. Um, San Fran 0-4 against spread on grass. That sucks because that's where their home field is. 2-5 against spread at home. I like the Rams to get the job done. San Fran just too beat up, too injured. I see the Rams winning this one by a touchdown, 10 points, something like that because of the injuries the Niners have. Kansas City at Buffalo. Kansas City is five-point road favorites. They are three and seven against spread versus Buffalo. Five and seven against five and twelve, sorry, against spread versus Buffalo. If you want to go back a little more, two and six against spread in Buffalo. The road team is seven and two against spread in the head-to-head. -head. However, Buffalo is twenty-two and thirty-five against spread at home versus teams with winning records. I like Kansas City to win this game, but I see this as another game that should be close. Another three-point game, two to four-point game, somewhere in around there. Kansas City wins. Buffalo keeps it close. They're both really good teams. Should be a game to watch. That's the game I will be looking probably most forward to this week. Arizona at Dallas. Dallas, Dak Prescott. My goodness, man. I just recovered. 
because I want to beat Dallas real bad, but I want you playing when we play against you and beat you. I don't want you sitting there with a busted up fucking ankle not being able to be your full 100% self. I hope you get better. I hope it doesn't affect your career too much. Arizona, minus one and a half. Favorites on the road. The underdog is 97 and 64 against the spread in Cowboys games since 2010. Cowboys are 0 5 against the spread on the year with their 2 3 record. The underdog is 4 1 against the spread in the head to head. The home team is 8 3 against the spread. Arizona 1 4 against the spread in Dallas. Throw all that out this year, especially the, the addition of uh, DeAndre Hopkins for Arizona. Kyler Murray playing well. You got the two running backs both playing really good like it, there's no specific flaws in Arizona's game right now I think they can get the job done against Dallas especially with all the injuries uh, the only thing that scares me is it, does Dallas play their hearts out for Prescott this game for this Sunday and that's a little bit scary so be leery of that but I'll roll with Arizona I think with all the injuries and the Cowboys issues on defense I think they are the better team right now and I like them to win and cover. That's my week six for the NFL. Peace.